Hello everybody, this is Matt Noakes, and thank you for joining me, and welcome back. I've been gone for a couple of days, but but uh, I decided to do an audio today, but I'll be returning with a video tomorrow. And today, I'd like to talk about our attitude and, and, and a healthy life, and the, the type of lifestyle that we have. You know, a lot of times in, in baseball and softball, we're thrown into competition such an, at such an early age that young players, well, they're struggling from the very beginning. They're fighting and clawing, and, and they have people from the, from the bench and, and family members and coaches from the, you know, from the stands or from all over the place giving advice and elbow up, let's, you know, you know, straight front leg or do, you know, whatever it is, you know, um, it's kind of silly because it's, it's mostly mechanical things that people try to try to try to help young players with when, you know, the single most important ingredient to hitting is their timing. And even with, even with mechanics that aren't very good, and, and really you got to think of it this way, your mechanics are whatever they are. Your swing feel is just the series of moves that you know. And you're not going to change them much just because you, you know, change your elbow position or something like that. It's still a movement. It doesn't matter where you start. It's the movement that what we're after. We're after learning the natural movements. And that's what I've been talking about all this time about the 12 touchstones. 12 touchstones also represent the problem areas. Now, if we're going to deal with all of the problems and all of the hardships and all of the hard things that go on in arguably the hardest skill set in sports to master, which is hitting that ball, so you, you young ladies in softball and young men in baseball, attitude is a big part of it. I mean, the world around us is neutral and we shape our lives by our attitude. You know, it, it's our, our attitude of of getting up and going and doing our work and getting our schoolwork done so that we can get our workouts in. Um, it's our attitude is what's going to, um, even if we're not feeling good, it's that, it's that way, way deep down. It's that residual attitude from habit of getting up every day and doing your work and running those stairs and, uh, you know, taking the extra batting practice and training smart. If you have the right attitude about training smart, that's another huge thing for me when I was coming up to understand. A lot of times I just, there was a hill by my house, okay? And you can pretty much only do what you know. And I knew I needed to work hard. So I had this attitude, I'm, I'm going to work hard no matter what. So that's pretty much all I knew how to do is just work hard. So there was this hill by my house, I just run it as fast as I could. When I get to the top, I'd get sick. And then the next day, I'd do it again. And pretty soon, I'd start running it faster, running it faster and faster. Well, the faster I'd run it, the hill was so steep that by the time I got to the top, no matter what shape I was in, by the time I got to the top, I'd get sick no matter what because it was such a long hill and it was so steep that, you know, you just keep running it faster and then you get sick at the top regardless. You know, your heart rate's up to about probably <laughs> 190 beats or something. I mean, well over that threshold where your body just can't can't stand it. You just get sick. Um, and I wasn't pacing myself. I was going all out. And that was kind of that reckless abandon that I had as a young player when I decided I wanted to play baseball. And how old was I? Well, I was about nine years old. Yes, I didn't, you know, think I was completely, you know, if you would have asked me in high school, what are you going to do? Well, I would have probably said something, you know, I, I wanted to fly. I'm a pilot now, but that was something that I was interested in. Um, you know, just do whatever, whatever young, whatever is in your heart to do, what, whatever interests you, whatever, you know, whatever would make you want to get up out of the morning or get up in the morning and get out of bed and, and be excited about the day. That's what you should be doing. But right now you're playing ball and this is an exciting period of your life because it's like you're a professional ball player. I mean, you do it every day. You're fully committed. I mean, this is what you do. You've been doing it for, you know, if you're in high school, you've been doing it for six, eight, maybe even 10 years. And if this was martial arts, you'd be a black belt. 
But unfortunately, because we haven't been taught a lot um, of the specifics about what to do, you know, we're taught a lot of generalizations and usually what we're taught are their positions, their positions, their non-moving uh, places in our swing that that people have observed and they think are important. And actually a position is, okay, it's good to analyze a position, but the way your subconscious and automatic mind needs to function, you don't want to overfocus on a position. You don't want to like, you know, break your swing down into positions and stop and pause. One of the worst things that you can do is, is practice your swing in series of pauses and then explosions and pauses because your body doesn't work that way. Instead, it'd be better off working in short little movements and that's what rehearsals are all about. Short little movements and then these movements are designed to put together. They link together like puzzle pieces and they fit together perfectly because they're all about efficiency. And efficiency, when something's efficient, what is it? It's better. And when it's better, what happens? Well, you want to use what's better. If you're up to bat and you feel a little, a little better swinging a certain way or with a certain feel because you rehearsed it and your feel is a little better, well then, trust me, you'll use it. You're going to use, we are going to use whatever feels best. Okay, so it's important to do our rehearsals in series of movements. And that's what the natural movements are all about. Now the 12 natural movements are, are they, they string together a little bit more than, than two or three movements. But the, but the rehearsals are even smaller than those natural movements and those are the scaffolding that we use to paint the building, the scaffolding that we use to repair the roof and to repair the site, you know, to repair the building or, or the structure or whatever we're doing, whether it's a sculpture, big, you know, uh, you put scout, there's, you know, they, when they're doing repairs on the Statue of Liberty, they put scaffolding up so they can get up there and do some cleaning or whatever they're going to do. So when you need to do little repairs and little reminders, that's the rehearsals. The rehearsals support the 12 natural movements. And these movements are absolutes. They are rules. They are, they are things that all great hitters do. You just have to do this because they are similar to other sports. I mean, it's just the way your body wants to move, the Bernstein principle. The body organizes itself in the most efficient way possible to get the job done. So think about it. The body wants to move in the way that's efficient. The body wants to do it. Because let's say you're playing, you're wrestling with somebody, and you make a move that's inefficient. Well, if you feel any feeling of weakness, you're going to recruit other muscles and, and, and other places to, to, to grab into the ground to get leverage so that you can... Uh, uh, torque your upper body against your lower body and it's very similar with hitting. Now why am I saying all that and some, some technical things when this was a bad attitude? Well because if you are going to work towards efficiency, attitude is everything and one type of attitude is not just a hard work attitude that's you know we could we all need to do more of that. We all need to, to push ourselves a little bit harder. We all need to dig a little deeper. But what I see often is I see young players with an attitude that doesn't project well. I mean, if you want to get recruited, if you want to get scouted and recruited, if you want to make the Olympic team as a young lady, or first make a college team and then be an Olympic player, or if you want to be a, a you know, college, college baseball player and then a professional, maybe even a major league player, you have to project as, as something special. And what is that special? That you're this great hitter all of a sudden? Well, no, that's incremental. That's going to happen over time. 
But what you have to project, see, you show your attitude by the way you go about your business. You show what's inside of you. You show what you're made of by the way you go about your business. And I fear for many, many young players who've worked all their life. They've worked, you know, some, some since the time they were five years old and now they're in high school. So it's been literally 12 years, sometimes, you know, 13 years they've been working and they want to go to a great school, but they're just not projecting the right attitude. And yet they might be even one of the better players on the team. And yet they see all the other, you know, they see other players around them getting letters of intent or, you know, other schools are interested in, but they're just not getting the interest. Well, we all grow up in different situations. You know, sometimes our, um, we come from environments where uh, we get pushed and sometimes we get pushed a little, you know, overly pushed. We get pushed a little too much. And as a defense mechanism, we, we, we learn to filter, but we learn to kind of filter out and just kind of numb ourselves out a little bit because we don't want to feel uh, the, the stinging kind of insults or the, you know, you're not good enough and you're not working hard enough and you're, you know, we, we, we try to protect ourselves and that's natural and that's normal and, and we should do that. As parents, we need to be very careful. I remember when I was in high school, um, I was going through a real rough patch and I said, you know, dad, I'm gonna, I, I just don't want to play anymore. And to my surprise, he goes, all right, well, you know, if, if that's what you want, I'll support that. And I kind of was shocked when he said that because I didn't think that was going to be his response. But he seemed very sincere. His attitude was such that I believed him. You know, so, of course, within a, w within a couple days, I had changed my attitude because whatever was hurting was kind of went away and I kept up my hard work. And then, you know, I, of course, I changed my mind or my mind was probably never fully on quitting. But, but um, baseball is something and softball is something that makes you want to quit. It's so difficult. It is so difficult. And as we always say, it's one of the most d difficult skill sets to master because it's hard to hit that ball when someone's trying to make it impossible for you to hit it. You know, they're throwing, they're inventing pitches on you and you can't hide. You know, let's say you're, you're, you're in a hot streak and, but you're not hitting very well with, you know, your, your average um, is, isn't very high. Well, you think, okay, well, I'm going to certainly get some good pitches because, you know, I'm not hitting very high average or anything. But really, if you think about it, those coaches and the other team, they're going to find out who's hot. And so you can't hide. And if you're hot, maybe the last couple games you've been hot, but you're still digging your way out of a hole because, you know, maybe you've had a slow start or, or you know, maybe this has been a slump that you've carried on for the previous year and you're finally maybe getting something going but it's just not consistent and then all of a sudden people recognize you as being one of the hot hitters even though maybe you're hitting in the eight hole you're hiding in the eight hole but you know you can't escape it because those pitchers can tell when you're hitting well okay so you need to use it to your advantage and become a sniper and not a counter puncher not a defensive player but a predator up there you got to be like, like a leopard ready to strike. You got to be up there aggressive and, and, and knowing exactly what you're doing. And that begins with your attitude. Now, I began to tell you that, that you show who you are as a, as a ball player and as a, the, way, the way coaches can project out on you by how you go about your business and then your attitude that you project. Okay, the reason why I gave the, the stories of hard times and stuff is because sometimes it's so hard that we put on this, we put on a mask, we, we, it's a coping mechanism. We, we kind of we develop a cocky attitude or it, it, it's an appearance of cockiness. And it comes out in the form of hitting style, hitting style, not 
efficient mechanics that are important. Not the important stuff, not the important bits, but hitting style. Um, when I was in the minor leagues, at first, I remember you know looking at older players and they'd foul the ball straight back. And I always thought if someone fouled the ball straight back that they were right on it. They just missed it. And later I came to realize, no, you missed. You didn't hit it. You, 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 know, you missed it. Because if you were really on it, usually when you foul the ball straight back, you're not really on it. You, you were probably behind it. And yet you took a shortcut or two and you caught up to it. And because you caught up to it, you got your timing right or you got your timing close. And maybe you fouled it back with your barrel at the right place. But you were catching up, so you didn't get the barrel on plane. Because if you were really on time, you would have had your barrel on plane. There wouldn't even be a question whether you were going to hit it. So I'm concerned about the players that, on both ends of the spectrum, those that are overly negative, and there's, it's kind of the woe is me attitude, and I'm, I'm saying that because, listen, we've all felt that. We've all felt like we can't remember the last time we've hit a ball hard. It's going to happen. It, you know, it's like it's, it's just a test from the emergency broadcast system. It's just something you, you have to go through to learn and mature and to, and to toughen up. But in that hardening that shell a little, a little bit, which, which you need to do, you need to, you need to toughen up and gain perspective that you're not going to succeed every time and that it's not a reflection on who you are as a person and your value as a person because who you are as a person is very different than your performance out on the field. But your performance also needs to project a, a air of that you're a good soldier, that you're working hard, that you're going to be a good teammate and that you're coachable. And the problem is, is that in this journey where we're trying to get better, a lot of times we we get a cocky look to us because we develop this hitting style that's overly flashy. So the guy that, that, that that's fouling the ball straight back, well, if they keep doing that, and one thing I noticed, I started to notice when I was coming up, the guys that would always foul balls straight back, and I was thinking, Boy, that looked like a great swing at first. Well, after you know, after a while, I picked up on the fact that, man, they have a great finish. Their swing looks beautiful. And then I realized their swing looks too pretty. It looks too pretty. Because if you would have hit the ball, you'd have been running. You wouldn't have had this pretty finish. And young players, they tend to, when they look at a major league player, they tend to look at their hitting style not at the mechanics. And the thing is, is that you don't want to replicate anybody's style and you don't even want to develop a style that's, that, that looks or that people notice uh, that looks a little overly pretty. You just want to be short, efficient, and blunt, like a blunt instrument. And you crush that ball and you're running. It's kind of more of a humble look to you. Um, that scrappy player look, not the pretty player look. With you know, you're holding your poses and all that. And that's that that ends up a lot of times. You know, players will end up with straight legs, and sometimes they're they're going up on their tippy toes when they're when they're holding their posture. And it's like uh, you're just leaked straight up. And once you once you, once you begin down that path of trying to have this pretty finish. You start to be, you start to doing it, you start doing it as a defense mechanism sometimes, and sometimes it's subconscious, and maybe it's not. I mean, I can't judge everybody, but this is how it appears to someone from the outside, uh, someone like me who's evaluating players. If I'm looking at somebody and their swing is like overly pretty, because when you look at a player, if you think of, you know, a swing looks pretty, and so you want it to look pretty, well, if you don't have good mechanics and then you have this strangely uh, worked out hitting style, like a strangely polished hitting style or start and finish, a strangely po polished start 
a strangely polished finish, and yet your mechanics are sloppy and long, and your timelines are long. It doesn't look good. It looks really bad for as a recruiter, as a scout, as an evaluator. It just looks it looks kind of tacky. It's like the person that's fouling a ball straight back and does this pretty finish because they missed it. Now, hey, look, I've been there too. We've all, you know, we're all going through, you know, we've all been through things like that. But the the important thing is to nip it in the bud, to not keep doing it. Listen, you want to be brutally efficient and you want to, not worry or think about your hitting style because you already have a style. Your lever lengths, the bat you choose, um, the angle that you lean over the plate is is unique to you if you find the place, if if you happen to find the place that, that you can rotate uh, the most efficiently. They, they found it in golf. Everybody kind of has an angle where they, where, you know, their hip and spine angles uh, uh, um, where they're most efficient and so you know if if you hit for a while and figure out where your your best angles are um, you know and you start gaining efficiency stick to efficiency look at Mike Trout his swing is pretty but it's it's efficient pretty listen as a young player you don't want to have these big one-handed twirly cues up up and around and you know these big dramatic finishes lose that cuz it's not impressive it's not it takes your focus off the important stuff which is which is being brutally efficient your attitude how you appear i've seen many players look like they're cocky when they're really not inside they look like they're they're, they act like they're better than everybody when re- really that's not really how they feel. But, how, but that's how they're projecting. They act kind of, it's almost like they're covering because they've been through a lot. They have to cope with a lot because maybe they had a hard upbringing or maybe they've been p- pushed a little t- too hard or maybe they didn't really get the right information and they've been struggling or they're going through a rough patch. You never know what's going on in somebody's life. And, and, you know, we react in strange ways and, and it's unpredictable. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is, is that no matter what's going on in your life, you need to present an attitude, an upbeat attitude like a soldier ready to get out there, ready for the next play. You, you could have just screwed everything up and just, you know, a, a, a missed a ground ball right between your legs or whatever you want to dig a hole and and hide in it out on that field Um, but the players with the good attitude they hold their chin up they hold their chest high and they and they just act like okay I'm 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 gonna move on to the next play and then they do make the next play or when they come in they don't let it affect their at-bats see when you if your attitude isn't right, it shows up. Everybody knows. Because if you get rattled, it's and then it affects other parts of your game. People notice. I mean, they're, you know, they're they see what's going on, especially your teammates and the opposing pitcher is going to pick pick up on it quickly. If the opposing pitcher picks up on it, they're just going to pull the string. They're going to throw you something that looks pretty good off the plate, and then they're going to throw one right down the middle and pull the string on it. And you're going to make a comfortable out. And you may even think that you're right there, you're going to get them next time. They, oh, you almost got this ball. But when, in fact, you're, it's called a comfortable 0 for 4 when you thought you were going to hit the ball hard every time, but you didn't because you're, you're out of sorts. You're not, you're not tuned in. So attitude is so important. So you need a good attitude to work hard. You need, in, in spite of how you feel, you know, sometimes you need to put the remote down. You need to get away from the TV or get away from your computer or your phone. And you need to go work out. You need to go for a run. 
You need to go run some stairs. You need to go th- throw, throw a ball up against a racquetball court if there's no one there to play catch with you. You need to do whatever you got to do to play catch every day. Work on your long toss. Work on your long and low toss. Um, there's all sorts of things. Work on your crow hops um, to, to make your, your game well-rounded. But ultimately, if you hit, they find a place for you. So coming back to hitting, let's get away from style. Now, you're already going to have your own style. Just like Mike Trout, you look at him and he doesn't have any extra stuff in his swing. His swing, it you know, it appears to only be what he needs to do to hit to crush the ball. Okay. And and because of that, it's beautiful. Efficiency is beautiful. And 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 when you are efficient, it it's noticeable. And you want to project out. You want to be a player that when when coaches look at you, you're not you're not covering you don't look like you're you're covering for something or you have this attitude because you've been hurt because you've been struggling because you're trying to to cope with this you know with the hardships of playing ball it's not easy you're going to struggle get rid of that chip on your shoulder it looks like a chip on your shoulder when that happens you know when when you act when it looks like you're acting like you're 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 as good or better than anybody else or it looks like you don't care. Those are common attitudes of when you're just trying to cope with failure. You're just trying not to feel the pain so much. And so we we kind of try to hide in in a feel, you know, we try to push our feelings away and so I'm I'm not going to care about this. Well, in fact, you know, of course we do. I walked many nights around the uh cities that I didn't even know where I was basically on the road in the minor leagues wondering if I was even a baseball player thinking you know I'm just I can't do this I'm not I'm not very good at this but ultimately it was the cumulative incremental pushing and pushing and pushing when you know when things maybe weren't so bad in competition that's off-season stuff or maybe early in the year those are the times you don't wait to push you don't wait to work out when you're not hitting well you want to be working harder even uh, um, before that you want to see look you know one of the things that I that I learned early on when I figured it out when I became a big league hitter when I learned the plan when I understood timing and I understood uh, efficient brutally efficient mechanics um, I didn't know everything. There was a lot I didn't know, and I wish I would. I could, you know. I wish someone was there, working on behalf of my career, like I'm doing right now, doing the research to help the next generation have the the insights that I didn't have. So a really important lesson that I learned was we tend to work extra. We put in the extra work when we're struggling. And when we're going good, we're afraid to, to mess things up. So we tend to not work as hard or we tend to want to leave it alone. We tend to say, hey, if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it, which is a good strategy um, for, for the most part. Uh, you, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yet you should use that. Use your feelings, whatever you feel, whatever efficiency you feel, whatever timing you feel, to do something outside of the game thoughts, outside of the, the d- direct game action, and, and start to build routines so that you're doing something every day, especially on the days that you're doing well, so that when you continue to do well and you're standing on second base, you're not just looking back to how you felt in your stance, because that's what you do when you're struggling and you don't get a hit for a long time. You don't have anything to grab onto, and then all of a sudden you get a hit. You go, what did I feel like when I was setting up? What did I feel like when I started there? That's all, that's all you have to hang on to. But what I would rather you do is to have the whole, you know, the whole pregame, everything that you did to prepare yourself for the game, that day, the day before, that last week, the last month, 
you know, something that you've been doing cumulatively for years. This is something that you need to start to build now. You need to start building your routines and you do your routines whether you're on a hot streak or a cold streak. You do what's efficient. Look, you you can be consistent and you can do things efficiently when you're rehearsing because you're not it doesn't in, involve performance because there you're not hitting a ball, not even off a tee. Rehearsals are without a ball. So you're just working your movements and your timelines and the flow of your body as well as uh, switching gears and working with you know, coping with the pitcher, filtering out his motion, timing the pitch or sinking release, timing the pitch, um, you know, and then and then the physical parts of it, of timing, which would be uh, coordinating your stride and transfer um, and then having swing flow and then matching the swing time of the pitch time. So there's a lot of different variables that you have to manage that you have to work into your into your pregame that you don't have to directly relate it. You just have to be, we work on exaggerations. Now, if you don't know what rehearsals are, that's, that's, that's where, that's where I come in. But, you know, you have to want this. You have to want to work hard. I don't work with people that it, if, if they're not going to apply themselves, it's just, it's, I, I used to try to do all the work for them. For, for players for a long time I used to do that but now you know obviously I realize that you know players coaches uh, parents you know your kids are going to have to do the work and some of the work is not going to be performance some of the work is not going to be just hitting in the batting cage you may put in a token and you may only have to to, to do your workout correctly and to perform to perform better, to get the most out of that round, maybe you only swing three times because you're working on other things. Now, I admit, if you're just randomly inventing things, it's not going to work. You have to have someone who knows what they're doing. This is why I went to work to do the research so that I could help young players get more out of the batting cages than, than just you know, going in and not hitting very well, maybe the first run. It's weird. Maybe the first run you do really well because you don't stride, you don't shift your weight, you don't do anything. You just let the ball come out and then you just swing your bat when the ball gets right right there. And, and you end up hitting the ball hard because you let the ball come to you and you didn't move and you took a short swing and you weren't trying to hit it hard. You're just trying to swing the bat and you hit it right on the barrel and you go, wow. But then you then you take your stride, then you shift your weight, you do all the stuff that you're supposed to do when you hit the ball in a game, and then, you know, it, it becomes harder, and you, know, you start to struggle, but then slowly, eventually, maybe after three or four rounds, you start to feel something, okay, I got something, I got something going, and then maybe you have a round, maybe two rounds where you, you're sort of locked in, but then <laughs> you're expectations change then then you're like oh i found something i found something and then you start focusing in on it and then you then you can't you you can't execute at the level that you're ex of of your own expectations that you have put on yourself because now you're thinking hey i can hit anything and i'm going to hit the first pitch that comes to me you know i'm going to be able to hit my pitch when it comes the very fact that you were taking batting practice that way, that's aerobic batting practice that it has nothing to do with preparing yourself for a game at bat. A game at bat is one swing. You you have to go up there thinking all you get is one swing and you're going to get your one pitch and, when, and use your one swing and you're not going to miss it. It's a completely different mindset, but it has to be taught. It's not something that's just innate. It's something that you have to work out through layers and layers of of you know you know incremental growth, but then also t timely coaching and t timely uh, you know n nudges in the right direction, so that you don't go off on a rabbit trail and 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 uh, um, hunt for a field that's just t isn't going to work. You know what I mean by hunting for fields, because I know you guys probably change your swing every pitch. Every you go down the batting cage, you start banging on the ball. Why? because you want to do something about the fact that you're in a slump. And then what does that do? Well, every swing you take changes the time that it takes you to get to the ball. 
it, it changes your timeline. So you're making yourself quicker or s slower, shorter or longer, more efficient, less efficient. That changes that timeline. So now every pitch, basically, you're changing the time it takes to get to the ball. And you think, well, that can't make much of a difference. Oh, yeah? A tenth of a second is 14 feet of the ball traveling. Seven one thousandth of a second is a foot. And as young players, because of, of your swing planes, generally being this high finish up thing is too steep going up. And you have no ability to go out and get a ball. So you don't even have a foot of range, a foot of margin for error like you should. But so there are a lot of rehearsals that you need to even flatten that out to, 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 to create a swing plane that has a nice six degree plane, which is basically flat, six degree positive angle, which is basically flat in the big scheme of things. And it's only at six degrees because you're leaned over the plate and when you rotate, your top hand shoulder is below your your front arm. Why? Well, because you're leaning over and something has to occupy that space. So my point is, is that, you know, you're going to work hard, but you need to get the direction. Now, Frank Robinson gave me that direction, and I'm thankful. 12 years, I'd been in the big leagues. It was 12 years later, and I was playing for the Orioles. I, si I was signing my contract with the Orioles, actually, and Frank Robinson was the general manager. And I was in the office. I was signing my contract. I said, Frank... You know, I never properly thanked you. And he goes, what do you mean? I go, I go, you changed the course of my career when I was 19 years old. And you, you gave me the plan. And literally, I couldn't hit. I mean, I literally was overmatched at every turn. I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't hit any of the pitching because they were just blowing me away or I was way out front. I didn't know how to hit. I was trying to listen to other people. And every time I tried to apply what someone else was doing, it didn't work. Because it wasn't mine. And I, I didn't know what mine was. You gave me the plan, and I wasn't the same after that because I literally went to spring training, and I couldn't do anything wrong. No, obviously I didn't tell Frank all this stuff. But I'm telling you all this stuff, but you know, I just said, I just said, Frank, you know, I just want to thank you for doing this, you know, for 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 changing the course of my career. And he said, Well, your success was thanks enough. So all this other stuff, I'm just telling you. <laughs> just to give you the background. But, you know, the point is, is that, you know, um, if it, when it's right, it works right away. When you learn efficiency, it works right away. But we, we're, we're, we're so stubborn and for good reason, lots of times, because we get coaching that is, well, it's not very good to be frank. And it's not correct because it doesn't come from a place of true experience and because of that, it's just a guess. And you know, as a ball player, whether it's right or not. And you know whether it's going to work or not. And then when someone insists that you do it, it really puts pressure on you. Because now you have to perform like someone wants you to do it. And it's just not right. It just doesn't. Obviously, you're going to fail if that happens. Over the long haul, you're going to fail. So you have to have a good attitude in the high times and the low times. You have to have a routine. And that takes a good attitude. Because it's very easy to not want to work when things are going well. And it's very easy to not want to work when things are going bad. Because you think, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just you know, overthinking this. Well, no, you can't overthink a deliberate action of doing something efficiently. Let's say you keep bending a nail. You keep bending and bending and bending. And every time you hammer a nail, you keep bending it and bending it. Well, do you just like, well, I just have to quit doing this for a while. No, you just get more deliberate and you go, okay. What do I got to do? And you start thinking of what, you know, what needs to happen and the angle that it's got to go in. You just be a little more careful. Well, you can't be careful in a game, but you can be careful in rehearsal. Well, what is rehearsal hammering a nail? Well, it's those little tap, 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 tap. Those little short strokes that doesn't really move the nail any, but it gets you used to the angle that you're going to go on. You have to rehearse before you do something. You have to rehearse, so... But you got to know what these rehearsals are. And if you don't know what they are, and then you don't know what they relate to, you're going to struggle. And that's what I've been doing for all this time. So that I could, I could help young players like you for young coaches, um, older coaches, parents, um, college coaches, professional coaches. You know, the full, the full spectrum. And it um, comes down, you know, one, an important pillar among all of 
the things that are important is your attitude. You have a good attitude. You're going to have a healthy life. You're going to have, you know, you're going to, um, um, you're going to go, you know, go along with the idea of delayed gratification. Hey, you're going to miss some parties. You're going to miss some things that, you know, your friends are out doing this or that, but you're in the gym, you're working out, you're getting your body stronger and you're, or, you know, you're working on your hitting, you're, you're working on your fielding, you're working on your game. You're going to miss some things, but it's, it's the delayed gratification to what it's those times that make you stronger. When 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 you start giving up things, you get you get an inner strength that you can't get anywhere else. You can't you can't just will that into existence. You can't just have a positive attitude. It it comes from sacrifice, and from that sacrifice comes mental toughness. Knowing that you've been working hard, you'll have a greater mental toughness than you'll be able to handle some more stressful things. So. Have a good attitude. Make sure you pro- you project well, like you're a good soldier, like you're coachable. Uh, don't make sure that you don't have an attitude. And ask somebody. Make sure you don't look like you have an attitude that you're a little cocky, that you're you know you're, you're a little t- too pretty with your swing, that you know that you're more concerned with it looking good instead of hitting the dang ball. And that's what happens when, when people get into their hitting style and thinking their style, well, they can execute their style every day. That's not, that's, that's not a problem. Hitting style is easy. I can do that no matter what, whether I hit the ball or not. But that's how in, in, insidious it is because hitting style doesn't mean anything. And so when, when someone's not hitting and yet, and yet they're acting pretty with their style, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. So... Um, efficiency that's what needs to be pretty efficiency you need to look like a blunt instrument short compact um, um, leverage you need to have leverage you need to use the ground you need to use the use your lower body as a, a stabilizing force to shift your weight and yet use it to stabilize so you can rotate against it um, not this sloppy drag get drag your back foot and get your knees too close together and now you're a, a one-legged hitter you know that kind of thing and that happens it's not your fault you just don't know about it and if you're if you're giving on off the wrong air it's because you just maybe you just don't know but if you know then you're responsible so i encourage you to have a really good attitude so you can work hard you can project well you can be doing your routines when you're supposed to you can practice a delayed gratification so that you you know, you know delayed gratification all also helps where you're you you are where you're supposed to be you're not going to get in trouble the best way to stay out of trouble is be where you're supposed to be you, you should be doing what you're you're supposed to be doing and you're going to stay out of trouble you're working toward a goal. You'll get more respect from that, and it will show up in the long run. People can see that incremental work. When you've worked hard over long periods of time and kept that attitude up, and you're not always going to feel all smiles and happy. I'm not saying an attitude of happiness. I'm saying an attitude of diligence and discipline and stick to and and humility and, um, you know, being that good soldier. So thank you for listening, and I hope this helped. I hope that you get a better understanding that if you want to make a serious run at this sport, and really this will apply to every area of your life, no matter what you're going to do, because sports are, are definitely a microcosm of life. And, you know, the way your attitudes in sports especially in something that's so difficult as hitting hitting a ball, the way you react to that is going to be, you know, reflective of how maybe you would handle stressful situations in everyday life or in maybe your next phase of life with working, um, working for somebody or working with somebody or if you're an entrepreneur, whatever it is, it's going to be, you know, a reflection on those same type attitudes because you can, you can draw on those. So... I encourage you guys, go out and have a good attitude. Go out and be strong. Be diligent. Stick to your routines. Have a healthy life. Eat well. Do all the things you're supposed to be doing. Be where you're supposed to be. Practice self 
or practice delayed gratification because it's going to pay off in spades. Have a good night.